The father of nuclear physics was born on August 30th, 1871, here in the beautiful country of Aotearoa, you know, New Zealand. He's most known for the discovery of the atomic nucleus, but he's also responsible for discovering the concept of the radioactive half-life and performing the first induced nuclear reaction in history. There's so much to say in three minutes, so let's narrow it down. Let's talk about gold and the atom. Prior to his work, it was J.J. Thompson's model of the atom that was generally accepted. His model, which was composed of negatively charged electrons suspended in a liquid-like blob of positive charge, became known as the plum pudding model. And while this model could make sense of electrons bumping into these atoms and being slightly deflected, the theory was sick. Thompson just didn't know it yet. By 1899, our father of nuclear physics had discovered alpha particles, what we now know as the nuclei of helium atoms. And while by 1902 he had discovered that they were positively charged, and had even figured out the mass to charge ratio, he wanted to know the actual values of the mass and the charge. And to do that, he needed to measure one of those quantities independently. So, he sought out the assistance of Hans Geiger to build a device to make this measurement. There was only one problem. The alpha particles were being deflected too much in the measuring chamber to get accurate data. And if Thomson's model was right, that should be impossible. The charge in the plum pudding model would be too diffuse for the alpha particles to bounce off of. And so began the gold foil experiments. Beginning in 1909, under the direction of our hero, Geiger and his undergraduate assistant, Ernest Marsden, began investigating how alpha particles can be scattered by a very thin sheet of gold foil. What they found was that, most of the time, the alpha particles just passed right through. But about one out of every 8,000 alpha particles bounced back. Building off of these results, our hero came to a singular conclusion in 1911, that these alpha particles were bouncing off of a tiny, heavy, charged core of an atom, a nucleus. In this paper, he made specific predictions about the rate of reflection, governed by angle, the foil thickness, the amount of nuclear charge, and the energy of the alpha particles. And in 1913, Geiger and Marsden confirmed all of these predictions were correct. This cemented the dethroning of Thomson's plum pudding, and crowned a new model of the atom. A heavy but small region of positive charge surrounded by negatively charged electrons. Of course, this model was named after its discoverer and the hero of our story. New Zealand's own Ernest Rutherford, the father of nuclear physics and the greatest experimentalist since Faraday.